Hello and welcome back. Today I would like to show you how I fully automated my empowered oil production using only blocks from Actually Editions and Vanilla for Minecraft 1.12.2. The most intricate part is the oil converter which fits in a 3 by 3 by 7 space so I will begin with this. Afterwards I'll go over the rest of the system if you want to stick around. I build a column that is at least six blocks tall and make a three by three platform at the top. I place two automatic precision droppers straight across from each other and facing the center block. On the other two sides, I add a fluid placer and fluid collector also facing the center. Now I right click all four machines with a redstone torch to change them to pulse mode. This causes them to activate once when given a redstone signal. Then I place a comparator on the side of all four machines facing counterclockwise. I find the comparator connected to the fluid placer and add a phantom redstone face under the opposite corner. This is because it outputs the same direction as the redstone. Now I hold shift and right click the comparator with the phantom connector and then shift right click the redstone face. It will say the connection is fine and working when they are linked. I add some solid blocks underneath. Then I place two redstone dust to the right of it and a redstone torch on the side of the third block. This torch will turn off when the fluid placer has more than a bucket of refined oil. In the corner next to the block, I place another redstone face with a torch on the front. Then I link it with the phantom connector to the comparator in the opposite corner, which is attached to one of the precision droppers. I place a third redstone face to the left of the first torch and place another redstone torch behind it. Then link it with the comparator on the other dropper. These torches will turn off if there are seeds in their respective droppers. Now I place solid blocks, two blocks below the center and all three torches, with redstone dust covering them. You can see how the torches activate the dust to create an AND gate. I put another redstone face under the second one we placed next to the redstone. Connect it to the comparator on the fluid collector. Then I add a repeater on the side and a redstone dust to connect with the circuit. This will turn it on when the collector has fluid in it. Under this block, I place the last redstone face and connect it to the dust that's sticking out in the front. Add a repeater facing into a block with a redstone torch on top. On the side, add a second repeater facing into a block with another torch on top. While it does work on the default setting, I suggest setting this repeater to at least two ticks to account for lag. Now I place phantom redstone faces under the four machines. Connect the first torch to the ones under the fluid placer and precision droppers. Then link the second torch with the redstone face under the fluid collector. This will drop the oil and seeds first, then pick up the empowered oil after a short delay. With everything set up, all that's left to do is add a couple buckets of refined oil to the fluid placer, some crystallized seeds in one dropper, and empowered seeds in the other. 
The empowered oil is made and picked up by the collector. Click it with a bucket to empty it, and more oil is converted. Later, this will be pumped out automatically to oil generators, so it should be draining constantly as you use power. If either of the seed droppers are empty, or the fluid placer has less than two buckets of refined oil, the machine will wait until it is restocked. Now that you know how to build the empowered oil converter, I will show you how I set up the rest of the automation to make this a fully functioning system. First, we need to grow the canola plants. I place a hopping item interface pointing back with a farmer machine on top. Place some canola seeds in the left side of its inventory. It also needs crystal flux power to operate. For now, I place a coal generator with some charcoal nearby and attach an energy laser relay to the farmer and generator. Any of the three energy relays will work, but the higher tiers do lose more power per transfer. Using the laser wrench, I right click both relays to connect them. Now I make a nine by nine square of dirt, one block below the farmer, and it begins planting the seeds automatically. Then I attach an item laser relay to the hopping interface to extract the crops. Although one field will work for this example, I wanted to speed up the production, so I add three more farmers with hopping interfaces below each one stacked on top of each other. Using the laser wrench, I connect all the power relays together and then link all the item relays as well. Now I place two chests with an advanced item laser relay attached to each. Right click one relay and place canola seeds in the left side labeled inbound. In the other relay, I add canola so the items will be filtered into the chests. Connect these with the laser wrench to any one of the item relays on the farm. You may notice that the canola chest is filling up, but the seeds chest is empty. This is because each farmer holds six stacks of seeds before they will output. This will take a while unless you've got some bone meal handy. I place a hopping interface under the canola chest facing into an item relay. Then I place a canola press nearby and attach another item relay connected to the canola output. Add an energy relay on top and connect that to the power. Now you can see the canola turning into oil. Place some fermenting barrels around the sides of the press and the oil will flow in and become refined. These barrels do not need power, but they are slower than the press, which is why I used three. Attach a fluid laser relay to each barrel and connect them. Place some oil generators nearby and add a fluid relay on each one linked to the barrels. Then I add energy relays and hook them up to the power line. I can break the coal generator now because the system is self-sufficient. I place another canola press connected to the canola output and power line. Using a compass, I right-click on the item relay to increase its priority. Now the canola will fill this press first and then overflow into the generators. These are important to have, otherwise the canola will back up the system 
and you won't get any power at all. I place three more fermenting barrels around the press and link them to the fluid placer in my oil converter. These lasers only link up to 15 blocks away, but you can just add more relays to extend the range if needed. Now that I'm done with the oil, I can process the seeds. Once your farmers have filled up, you'll start getting canola seeds in the second chest. I place a hopping interface below it and add an item relay. Nearby, I put an atomic reconstructor facing sideways. Right click with a redstone torch to change it to pulse mode and then connect it to power. On top of where the laser will shoot, I place a precision dropper facing downwards. This I leave on the default setting. Underneath, add a wooden pressure plate and now link the dropper to the seed output. One will be dropped on the pressure plate and shot with the laser to become crystallized seeds. While it is sitting on the plate, no more will drop. To pick them up, I place a ranged collector two blocks from the dropper. Make sure this is more than six blocks from the oil converter so it won't pick up the seeds there. Place a comparator behind the collector facing into the dropper. Then take the crystallized seeds and add them to the left side of the collector's inventory. Now it will pick up the seeds automatically and only make another one when it is empty. Add a hopping interface under the collector and attach an item relay to the output. For the final step, I place another hopping interface with an empowerer on top. Three blocks away in all four directions, I add display stands. Add energy relays on the side or bottom of each to power them. Then place item relays directly on top of each display stand and connect them to the canola seed output from the farm. Using the compass, I set the priority on the dropper higher than the display stands. You will have to wait for the dropper to fill with seeds, but you can move them by hand to get things going. Now I place an item relay on top of the empower and connect it to the crystallized seed output. Four lasers will fire, creating the empowered seed. Then add an item relay on the hopping interface below it and connect that to one of our precision droppers. I also link the crystallized seed output to the other dropper. This will have to fill with seeds before everything operates smoothly, but it is better this way in the long run. Now I place some oil generators and connect them with fluid relays to the fluid collector on our oil converter. Link the generators to the energy relays as well. To power external machines, you'll want to make another array of generators connected to the fluid relays. These I do not connect back to the power for the farm, so it doesn't drain the system and make it stop working completely. For example, I have this ore generator. It uses an atomic reconstructor with the lens of the miner. Above it, I have an auto placer full of stone and an auto breaker set to pulse mode with a button to power it. Under the breaker, I have a hopper facing a chest. So I connect the reconstructor to my separated generators and push the button. If this uses more power than you're producing, it will stop 
but the farm will keep going. I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to leave me any questions or suggestions you may have. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.